Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 9. <clears throat> and it came to pass on the eighth day. And remember, for seven days after the priests had been consecrated, they were to stay at the tabernacle at the door for seven days, the eighth day, that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish, and offer them before the Lord. <clears throat> No offering before devils, offering before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish, for a burnt offering. The first four chapters we looked at of Leviticus, Leviticus, a burnt offering, a sin offering. And a bullock and a ram for a peace offering. I think that was Leviticus 4 or 5. To sacrifice before the Lord. So you see, Leviticus sets forth before us. Before we get in real deep, it sets for us. In chapter 1, it sets forth the burn offering. How to do it. It sets off in chapter 2, uh, the meat offering. In chapter 3, it sets off the peace offering. In chapter 4, the sin offering. In chapter 5, the, press, the trespass offering. Now we're getting, okay, we talked about the offerings. There they are. There's what, now we're putting them into practice. So we see the burnt offering. We see the sin offering. We see the peace offering. And a bullock for a ram for the peace offerings. A sacrifice before the Lord. Nobody else but the Lord. And later on he's going to say only one place, Jerusalem. <clears throat> and a meat offering mingled with oil. For today, the Lord will appear unto you. Okay. And they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. All the congregation drew near to watch and stood before the Lord at the tabernacle. Now you see why somebody would want to call their church the tabernacle? Because when you come to our church, tabernacle something... God is there. We're in God's house. No, you're not. The Bible speaks about as far as tabernacle in the New Testament, it's our bodies. And you name your church the tabernacle, you're, you're putting yourself on the Old Testament. Because there it is. Tabernacle, tabernacle, tabernacle. Be careful how you name your church. You do know, if you've got Calvary Church, you do know what Calvary means. You have to search the scriptures, haven't you? The Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You do know what Calvary means. I hope you do. <clears throat> and Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you, the people, the Jews, the priests, the elders. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar, brazen altar, and offer thy sin offering. And thy burn off, notice thy, your, and make an atonement for thyself and for the people, and offer the offering of the people. So the people have an offering. Make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. And Aaron therefore went into the altar, unto the altar, not into it, excuse me, and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself, Aaron. Aaron's the first one, and we'll get by the end of the chapter, you see what we're doing. But Aaron's the first one to offer 
as he is the high priest. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him, their father, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. Now, 66 times blood is shown in the book of Leviticus. Ooh, that's an interesting number. So what? They, they kill the offering. Uh, as some kind of basin, his sons, the priests, gather up the blood and they bring that basin, that bowl, to Aaron. And he takes his finger on the on the altar, the horns, and then he pours it out inside that altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver. How many times we can read about that? I gave you the numbers the other night. 12, 13 times. That's not even mentioned. There are things about Jesus that are not even mentioned in all four of the Gospels. But we're, we're nine chapters in Leviticus and we know more about the call of the liver than we knew about from Jesus from eight nine days old to 12 and 14 years old to 30 what are we reading here what's important it's not Jesus in his preteen it's not Jesus in his teenage years it's not Jesus in his youth it's that sacrifice that Jesus is going to make on the cross, his blood. So how dare you go to a church and they put salvation water? How many times have you seen water so far in consecration and atonement? I haven't seen it. How dare you say, oh, we're a member of this church, so we're going to... Where do you see membership? I have not read a number yet so far in Leviticus. Now, when we get the numbers, there'll be numbers. But Leviticus points to Jesus Christ on that cross, the sin offering, the peace offering, the trespass offering. Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world, Isaiah 53. So in the flesh and the hide, he burnt with fire without the camp. They stepped out of the tabernacle. And there's something about Jesus with the flesh and hide. And remember, I took that hide, remember, I took it to Genesis chapter 3. Where God slew an animal and provided skins. That's what a hide is. And he slew the burnt offering. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood again. It sprinkled round about the altar. And they presented the burnt offering unto him, Aaron, with the pieces thereof, and the head, and the burnt. And he burnt them upon the altar. And he did wash the inwards and the legs. Okay, here's water. And burnt them upon the burnt offering on the altar. He cleans, he cleans the animal before he puts it on that grill. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat. Which was the sin offering for the people. The goat. Here's a goat for the people. And slew it and offered it for sin. As the first. Okay now the people's offering. And he brought the burnt offering and offered according to the manner. How it was supposed to be done. And he brought the meat offering. Yeah, so here's the meat offering now. And took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. The lamb. Lamb in the morning the lamb at night. And he slew also the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offering. That's what we all covered. Go back through the, through the chapters of Leviticus. And, which was for the people. And Aaron's son presented unto him the blood. Which he sprinkled upon the altar round about. So what do we do as Christians, as children of God? We bring that blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, to our high priest. Say, Father, I've sinned. I ain't going to bring a lamb's blood. I ain't going to bring a goat's blood. I'm bringing the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Now, we're still yet in our sins, so we need that mediator between God and me, the sinner, the high priest. And he says, Father... That one right there bringing the blood, that's my blood. He's ours. And you said, whosoever shall confess his sins, you're able and just to forgive and forget. And there it is. And there's our high priest making an offering for the priest, the blood. And notice no one's drinking it. No one's doing no hocus pocus. Fee, fi, fo, fum. This bread is now body. 
and be careful of Christian magic because that's what the Catholic Church and that's what the Lutheran churches and Protestant churches do. They say in a magical way that thing becomes the body of Jesus Christ. I don't see it here. I don't see them. No, this is, you know. Verse 18, he slew also the bullock and the ram. The ram, that's what was the substitution for Isaac. A ram caught in the thicket. See how the Bible all comes together. For a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, and he sprinkled upon the altar round about. And the fat of the bullet and of the ram, the rump, that's the rear end, the good part. And that which covers the inwards, the kidneys, the call above the liver. And they put the fat upon the breast, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. I mean, if I can just simply say, this is a barbecue. There it is. And the Bible records that God goes, I smell that. And I'm happy with that. Now later on, when you get an Amos in that, God's going to say, Phew, man, put it away. It stinks. I'm tired of it. Because they weren't doing it right. And the breast and the right shoulder, Aaron, wave or wave off. That's going back and forth. That's Pentecostal. Putting yourself back under the priest again. Got to be careful. Got to read your Bible. Before the Lord, as of Moses commanded, Aaron lifted up his, his hand toward the people. Lifts it up. Aaron's finished. Right now. Today. Aaron is finished. He lifts up his hands and goes, I'm done. Jesus Christ lifted up his hands and across says, It's finished. Only problem with Aaron is he's got to go back and do it tomorrow. He's got to go back the next day. He's got to keep doing it every day to his die till he dies. And when he dies in the mountain, we're gonna take his clothes, we're gonna put it on his son. Then he's going to do it, and then he's going to do it, and then he's going to do it, and he's going to do it until he dies and puts it on his son. Then he's going to have to do it, and then he's going to do it. But Hebrews says when Jesus Christ said, it is finished, it is finished, no more is he to die. No more is he to shed his blood once for all. And damn the church that says, oh yeah, this is Jesus, and he died again, and he died again, and he died again. Does that sound like he's putting you under the priesthood? Working every day? With the blood. One sacrifice Jesus Christ. Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them. And came down from the and came down from offering of the sin offering. And the burn offering and the peace offering. We've already discussed those. Now it's for the people. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay. How long? They don't say. And came out. What? They went into the tabernacle. And they came back up. How long were they there? What did they do? What did they say? We knew what uh, John the Baptist. I can remember his father. We knew what his father was doing. He was offering the incense of the prayers. The people were like, hey, he's taking forever. He's in there talking to an angel. Scared to death. Gabriel. And bless the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. So they bless the people, they go into the tabernacle, something, they come out of the tabernacle, bless the people. And there came fire out from before the Lord. There went fire out from, you can see Hebrews 9 19 on that. The people waited for Moses and Aaron to come out. We're waiting for Jesus Christ to come. And there came fire out from before the Lord. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. So that means he came. And consumed upon the altar to burn. Oh, how did that altar burn that, that meat? The burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted, Hey, please. 
Check out First Thessalonians 4, 16 on that one. And fell on their faces. Mark your Bible now. The priesthood has now finally began. So we had a date. Them. The priesthood has begun. We had the pattern. We talked about that. Everything was built. They set up the tabernacle. They anointed the tabernacle. We read all about that. Exodus. And then we talked about the offerings in Leviticus. And then we put the clothes on the priest. And we anointed them. And then we consecrated the priest. Now that burnt offering. That, alt, that brazen altar. God sends fire down. The brazen altar is now lit. Who started hell? God says, I made hell for Satan and his angels. Who set that fire? God did. And God says that altar is never to go out. Because that picture is hell. The priesthood has now begun. And it's not going to be. I know the temple gets closed and all that. But officially the priesthood does not close. It, it starts right here. Leviticus 9.24. And the priesthood officially by record of God closes when that temple is rent. I mean that veil is rent into two. And Jesus enters in and deposits our blood. Uh, his blood for our sins. So that priesthood begins now and ends when that veil is rent by Jesus Christ. I know in between times, you know, it, it goes out, it's closed, that they're not doing what they're supposed to, they're taking to Babylon. But it's funny, cause you, I don't think ever when we get to it, Nehemiah and Ezra, I don't think I ever read about that brazen altar. There's no brazen altar today. The Jews are not doing right today. They cannot bring their, they don't even know who the priests are. Never mind the other 12 tribes. They have no idea who they are. And if you were to find out, and you were to go to Jerusalem today, and you were to climb the city of Jerusalem, hey, you got the dumb of the rock. And that's not where God wants you to bring it. It will start back up sometime around the tribulation period. I don't know if it starts even before the, before the church goes. I don't know. But it will be definitely in the tribulation period. Because the Antichrist is going to be sitting in the mercy seat. When he opens up that curtain, Jesus says, it's about the nation of desolation, there you are in the three and a half years. And then when we get to the millennium, boy, you got Jesus Christ sitting there watching this going on. Ezekiel talks about that future kingdom, that future temple coming. So here we go. We're set off. We have begun the priestlyhood. 